talking about computational psychopathology and actually about evolutionary approach to uh, computational psychopathology. Yeah. Uh, why it's important, why it's normal? First of all, because uh, it tries to connect a very diverse field of psychopathology into uh, a set of uh, simple models uh, connecting different uh, types of mental disorders. If, you are, if we are looking at the uh, modern psychopathology from the clinician point of view, we are seeing a collection of very diverse uh, types of mental disorders. Each and every one is throughout the research, but we lack a big picture, we lack the bird's uh, point of view. And uh, computational psychopathology approach is a proposal uh, which uh, can be uh, understood as a, as a way of combining this, just this diverse the areas of research and psychopathology. So, uh, my area of interest is actually the philosophy of biology. Uh, and uh, as a philosopher, I'm also interested in the ontology of mental illnesses because uh, I try to approach mental disorders from the processual uh, and, uh, and uh, contextual uh, point of view. Uh, very short introduction into the evolutionary perspective of medicine. We would uh, uh, actually uh, evolutionary perspectives uh, on medicine are quite rare one because the clinical approach uh, is more patient-centered, is more concerned with the um, pathologies of a particular human being than evolutionary models. Actually, evolutionary medicine is, has been created by bio biologists, not by uh, uh, physicians. But uh, generally speaking, it's uh, not a separate branch of medicine, but rather a framework for combining uh, um, medical sub-disciplines in order to understand disorders uh, not uh, in terms of proximate causes uh, but in terms of ultimate causes. So not why patient A has a set of symptoms A, B and C but why a particular disorder uh, has appeared in a certain population and what environmental and genetic factor influence it and why natural selection haven't eliminated it yet. And there are good reasons to apply this kind of reasoning to mental disorders from the evolutionary computational perspective we, uh, to, we can use several uh, types of ultimate explanations. One of them is pleiotropium, where, where one gene has more than one phenotypic effect. For example, one of those effects can be adaptive one and one detrimental one. But because the adaptive one is expressed early in life and increases fertility and fecundity and the detrimental one is expressed later in life after the reproduction has ceased natural selection don't, uh, doesn't eliminate the, this type of uh, uh, pleiotropy 
because it's adaptive, uh, because it uh, increases uh, fertility. So Huntington's chorea is a good example of such an antagonistic pleiotrope. Of course, the uh, other type of uh, ultimate explanation is so uh, is called mismatch. Uh, by mismatch, I mean mismatch between cultural and biological, uh, and, uh, um, cultural environment, which we have created as a species in terms of niche construction. So we have created a certain type of niche, and. Uh, Actually, our uh, bodies, which has been adapted by natural selection to other environments that we have created for ourselves. And the concept of normal distribution, because in the, when we are analyzing different mental disorders, they are usually multi-factor disorders. They are influenced by uh, several uh, at least several genetic and environmental causes. And in, some, in all cases of such a very complex disorders, we have a, a, a spectrum rather than a unitary disorder. So in the, the psychopathology, we speak of out spectrum disorder, of anxiety disorder, the spectrum disorder, of schizophrenia disorder, because there are uh, there are a smooth transition in, inside the, these broad categories. Uh, uh, because uh, we have not very much uh, time for intro introductory notes, I will just uh, point that um, the concept of niche construction, so uh, it is very important one. Uh, Actually, um, I would like to refer to uh, Przemysław Nowakowski uh, presentation because for me uh, morphological uh, computations are uh, very important but we can extend them to niche construction, to niches which can extend our bodies. And uh, some children papers about mismatch there is also some interesting connection between reproductive medicine and mental health because, uh, for example, uh, uh, schizophrenia and autism spectrum uh, can be also understood in terms of intergenomic conflict. There is a conflict uh, between uh, mother and father genes uh, about which I will tell uh, later, uh, in, in more details later, and approaching mental disorders, uh, I would like to propose a network, rather, uh, network model of mental disorders rather than a unitary model. First of all, I would like to argue that mental disorders are mostly not a unitary, well-defined uh, types of entities. Uh, they are rather to be understood as a collection of symptoms which are classified into broader categories, but there are smooth transitions between uh, certain types of disorders inside a broad category and uh, we cannot apply uh, the usual substantial approach between, because not always a certain uh, collection of symptoms uh, is enough to define a particular disorder. So uh, this is clearly uh, visible uh, when we are exploring the transition between uh, schizophrenia spectrum disorder, bipolar disorder, and depression. They are heavily interconnected and uh, better to be understood in terms of network model than the unitary model. There are, of course, uh, 
individual differences which uh, affect uh, particular manifestation of mental disorders. Uh, what I would like to present are uh, some models of uh, mental disorders uh, which are uh, explored in the field of uh, evolutionary and computational psychopathology. Uh, in terms of generalized anxiety disorder, specific phobia and agoraphobia, which in uh, DSM-5 is a um, separate category. Uh, and the principle of smoke detector is used uh, as a model for activation of, um, uh, of uh, danger avoidance methods. So, using that analogy, we can say that anxiety is just overexpression of no perfectly normal uh, mechanism of gender uh, sort of danger avoidance. Uh, using the same pattern, we can say that obsessive compulsive disorder, which is oft, which often manifests itself by, for example, compulsive hand washing uh, uh, because of the um, fear of, uh, for example, germs. Uh, we have uh, names for that in the psychopathology, it's called rupophobia and germophobia and it's quite uh, typical, uh, uh, it's quite typical when dealing with obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, compulsive hand wash. As uh, I pointed uh, previously, uh, we can understand anxiety, uh, generalized anxiety and specific phobia as an overexpression of danger avoidance mechanism. Uh, in using the same pattern, we can understand obsessive compulsive disorder as an overexpression of pathogen uh, avoidance mechanism. There is a whole theory of behavioral immune system, which is a set of behavior connected with parasite and the pathogens avoidance. Uh, I would like to use a biological concept which is uh, known as life history strategy because several uh, uh, psychopathologies can be modeled using the life history strategy. We can generally divide life history strategies into two broad categories. Fast strategies, so early maturation, investing in quantity rather than quality of offspring, and unrestricted social sexuality, and so on. And slow spectrum, when we have investment in quantity, is, sorry, in quality rather than quantity of offspring, uh, delayed maturation, stable relationships, and we can see manifestations of these two broad life history strategies into uh, several uh, mental disorders. So, as I have said, I would like to base my uh, comments on a processual approach to uh, mental disorders. So, um, on a smooth transition rather than a well-defined categories. Uh, when we uh, analyze the connections between two quite separate uh, types of uh, disorders, so between autism spectrum disorders and uh, uh, psychosis spectrum disorders, uh, we can clearly see that they are different realizations of these two types of life history strategies. 
And now I would like to refer uh, to uh, what uh, Pavel Stetsevich has said previously, uh, because his presentation, um, uh, his presentation inspired me uh, to, to, to uh, develop this concept. Uh, autism uh, spectrum disorder is characterized by hyper-mechanistic approach to reasoning. So it is uh, based on causal uh, reasoning. And people uh, with autism, uh, actually autism spectrum disorder is a very, uh, very broad category. What I'm talking about now is highly functional type of autism because there are other uh, detrimental types of autism. Uh, but in higher functional type of autism, this, um, there are uh, more local connection inside the cortex, especially in, in frontal uh, and temporal areas, uh, and less connection between different types or uh, different areas of the brain. For example, corpus callosum is thinner in autistic people than in normal individuals. So there is less interconnection between different lobes, but uh, the uh, density of uh, neural tissue uh, is, uh, is greater and we have a more localized types of information process. This uh, enhances the um, mechanistic reasoning, but uh, it, uh, but it uh, makes it harder uh, to mentalize. So, as uh, we perfectly know, autistic people are very bad at mentalizing about at, uh, understanding other people's emotions and, and understanding metaphorical language. Uh, uh, on the other side, uh, psychosis spectrum disorder is characterized by uh, hypermentalizing, ascribing intentions to people and even objects. Uh, but restricted uh, mechanistic uh, reason. There are some other uh, differences too, like uh, differences in visual spatial processing, but actually these are two different approaches to information processing. Uh, Autism spectrum disorder represents more algorithmic approach to information processing, and psychosis spectrum disorders represents more heuristic approach to, to, to information process. Uh, so maybe it's it will be um, interesting to say that uh, this can be understand, uh, understood as two extremities of a normal phenotype. Uh, two extremities of a normal uh, distribution. Of course, as I previously said, schizophrenia is called uh, the golden knot of the psychopathology because it overlaps with several other disorders and uh, it's quite uh, it's very uh, difficult to, to, to define uh, even clinical uh, criteria for, for schizophrenia. Uh, uh, out is inside out is spectrum disorders, we should also uh, 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 discern between highly functional autism and, and detrimental types of autism. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we have no time for, for making final distinctions. Uh, I would like to, to point out that bipolar disorders in, in that model can be also uh, modeled on a, a 
seasonal changes of, of uh, mood, uh, which uh, is, uh, for example, typical for normal, uh, indiv normal individuals, but in, uh, in uh, uh, case of, uh, of bipolar disorders, it's going to, to, to extremes. Uh, uh, to be very, uh, in order to be very concise, uh, I would like to um, uh, note that uh, <coughs> depression, uh, uh, from the evolutionary computational perspective, can be also understood as uh, adaptive in some situations. So, for normal individuals, so-called exogenous type of depression, depression we experience after some um, unfortunate events in our life, this is perfectly normal, uh, that we want to mourn the dead or uh, have a, a, a bad mood after, uh, after some unfortunate events. Uh, however, in case of uh, people with clinical depression uh, uh, and so-called endogenous depression, we have uh, um, extre extreme manifestation of, of symptoms which are uh, associated with depressed mood in a, um, a perfectly healthy individuals after some uh, unfortunate events. So, to, to, to some extent, depression can be understood as a adaptive in, in, in evolutionary models. Uh, for example, uh, uh, as a reaction to lo the loss of uh, status or uh, loss of position in a social hierarchy. Um, uh, in uh, several species of, of great apes, we have uh, this clear pattern that an individual who lost his position in a social uh, rank is depressed in order to avoid uh, uh, fighting, in order to avoid physical, um, uh, physical uh, confrontation with, with uh, individuals which, which can be beneficial in, in some context. Uh, okay, so uh, one minute for conclusion. Okay, uh, so uh, my main con conclusion is that um, computational modeling has uh, uh, changed psychopathology. Uh, first of all, because it offered some. Uh, models of understanding mental disorders uh, uh, in, um, uh, as, a, uh, as uh, uh, one single unitary approach of, uh, to, to uh, these different uh, types of uh, mental disorders. In other words, uh, I would uh, I would argue that uh, uh, if you would like to understand the ultimate causes of, of uh, mental disorders rather than the approximate one, then the evolutionary computational approach can be of help. So thank you very much for listening and I encourage you to ask some questions.